From Bunchlone Country, this is the Summer Homily Series with Bishop Greg Homing. When the day came for them to be purified, as laid down by the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. When they had done everything the law of the Lord required, they went back to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. Meanwhile, the child grew to maturity, and he was filled with wisdom, and God's favour was with him. When we look at famous people in history, the very famous ones, we often find that from the, their births until they appear publicly, something strange happens. Some go to monasteries, some are taken away. In mythology, some will go and they'll live with strange people and fairies because they're very powerful people. And in their own way, they're being prepared for what happens. But this is not the case for the one who founds Christianity. We know he's born and we don't see him again until the baptism. That's a long way off. So we've got the, the time he's born, he goes to the temple, he's lost in Jerusalem. But apart from that, we don't know anything about Jesus' upbringing, except that he's part of a family. And in that sense, the beginnings of Jesus are so different to any other famous kind of religious figure. Angels don't come to him and teach him and this kind of thing. His life, as we see it, as given in the Gospels, is simply ordinary. And I would presume from that also very normal, insofar as you can have an ordinary, normal upbringing for a Jewish child in the late antique period. He was brought up by Joseph and Mary in Nazareth in the way that every other child was brought up. I think it's very important for us because the person who, in fact, works miracles, preaches, and saves his people, for the first 30 years we know nothing about his life except as the Gospels present it to us, he was just brought up in an ordinary family. I think that's very significant for all of us as Christians because we all come from families that are ordinary and normal to different degrees. How ordinary and normal was Jesus' family? Probably about as ordinary and normal as my family and your family. Every family has its own eccentricities and its own ways, and no doubt Jesus' family would have had the same thing. It's what makes people distinct and individual. It's what made him the person that he was. I suspect that if we saw him, we would know that he was Mary's son because there was no one else he could have looked like. We would have known that his upbringing was through Mary and Joseph because people knew Mary and Joseph and he would have taken from them the things that they could have taught, which is not so much what they sat around and taught him, but was what they were and who they were. And I suppose it presents to us something which is quite simple for all Christians. The seed ground of holiness is the ordinariness of a family, the ordinariness of life. You don't have to have anything exceptional to be exceptional. You simply struggle to live the life which is given to you. And we believe that that is where holiness begins. So Jesus didn't have to be taken out to the desert as John the Baptist did. He didn't have to be taken to, to a monastery, somewhere like, like Masada. He didn't have to have great teachers, rabbis around him, teaching him. He was taught by being ordinary and normal. And as we begin our year, I think it's something for us to reflect upon. Let's just live ordinary lives. Let's just strive to be normal. Let's strive to be good and let's learn from our mistakes. Let's learn from the lessons that life gives us because this is how Jesus grew to maturity. And as the gospel said today, to wisdom. He grew to wisdom because like anyone else, he reflected on his life. He reflected on his experience. It wasn't given to him kind of out of the air like the Holy Spirit giving him wisdom. His was human wisdom. And that's what we're all called to. 
Let's pray that we will grow as Jesus did in our lives as ordinary, normal, good people, because that's where we find God. <laughs>